the planning committee. Uh, we've got one of our members is actually stuck and delayed on a train, uh, but he will be joining us as soon as he can. My name is Councillor Lisa Leach and I'm the chair of the committee. My role this evening is to ensure that the committee runs smoothly as regards procedure, behaviour and ethics. To explain who the rest of the people on the table here tonight are, to my immediate right is the council solicitor who will give advice to the committee on any procedural or legal matters that may arise. To my left are the council's planning officers, highway engineer and environmental health officers who will present the applications this evening and give any technical advice to the committee which may be sought. The rest of the people you will see down both sides of the tables are the elected members who will consider the applications this evening and make the decisions. Before each application is considered, there will be a short presentation by the planning officers. In the event that an application has received a qualified petition signed by 25 signatures or more, one rep representative of the petition will be invited to address the committee in support of the petition for up to five minutes. There is one ap ap uh, application tonight that's got two <coughs> petitions, so if both of the petitioners want to speak for five minutes, they can. If a petitioner addresses the committee, then the applicant or their agent will be invited to make representations to the committee in support of their application, again for up to five minutes. However, if a petitioner has not addressed the committee, then the applicant or the agent will not be invited to make any representations. A ward councillor can also address the committee in relation to an application. The ward councillor is not restricted to five minutes. However, once the ward councillor has returned to the public gallery, they may not return to take part in any debate that may follow by the committee. The application will then be open to debate and discussion by members of the planning committee, who will then make a decision on the application. The order of tonight's agenda is going to vary. We're going to have um, agenda item 4, or we say to the tenants, will be our first one. Agenda item 5, 64A, Stanley Road, will be the second. Then we'll go to agenda item 10, which is the land of Hazeldean Way. Then agenda item 7, which is the land adjacent to the St. Peter's Sea Primary School. And that's based on the number of people that are here for those particular applications this evening. So, the committee happy that we did that? Thank you. If the site visit is requested and approved by the committee, matters will not be discussed this evening and will be discussed at a subsequent meeting following committee visiting the site. Okay. Okay, uh, committee, can I have approval for the minutes um, for the agenda item 1, please? Okay, yes, Thank you. Are there any declarations of interest? Irene? Uh, it's just with regard to agenda item 11, I actually call this out of delegation, but I can't make the mind back. Okay, so you have to participate in the debate and not Irene. Thank you. Are there any requests for site visits? No requests for site visits. Thank you. Okay, if we can go to agenda item four, then Matthew, could you have a presentation, please? Thank you. Uh, thank you through you, Chair. This application was subject to a member's site visit on Monday. <coughs> The application site currently comprises of a small private tennis club made up of two tennis courts and a small pavilion. The road adjacent to the site is a private and adopted road also within the ownership of the applicants. The area is a mix of residential and commercial property and the site is located within the primarily residential area defined by the Unitary Development Plan. The application is an outline of all matters with the exception of layout and access being reserved for subsequent approval. The proposal seeks the redevelopment of the site of 14 new units, four new 
houses proposed at the southwestern point of the site. That's here. And um, a, a block of ten apartments in an L shape uh, located at the eastern half of the site adjacent to the railway. So that's this, this element here. Four houses would have their own private beer garden spaces and our street parking, whilst the apartments would share a communal garden located to the rear of the block. Parking provision is proposed at one space for apartments, together with secure cycle parking provision. The site is located within easy walking distance of Foy Lake Railway Station and good public transport links along Market Street, along which main amenities such as shops can also be found. The site in this sense is therefore considered to be a sustainable and accessible location. An element of affordable housing is required within this development and as such, having regard to the council's requirement for affordable housing provision, three units will be provided for affordable housing. This will be secured by the mechanism of a section 106 agreement. Also included in the section 106 agreement is a sum of £40,000 towards the upgrading of two public tennis courts at Mel's Parade, which would include resurfacing, new nets and repairs to the outer fencing. This financial contribution towards the upgrading of public courts, enhancing opportunities for public use, is considered to be a material consideration that weighs in favour of allowing these proposals. Access to the site would be via Charles Road, and the provision of the proposed turning head within the site at the top of Charles Road is considered to be a highway gain as there is currently no such provision in place. The unmade and unadopted private road that runs adjacent to the site, uh, that's along here, uh, would remain. The local authority understands that there are no plans to block this road off at uh, or to prevent access. Although the plans appear to show a pavement running across this private road, the proposals are in outline and the local authority can control the final layout of road surfacing, including its final design, etc., at reserved matter stage. Uh, however, an, an additional condition is also proposed as set out on the late list, which gives additional controls over the details of the construction of the road and access to the site. The layout achieves minimal separation distances, ensuring privacy is maintained and preventing overlooking. Additional landscaping around the site boundaries would further screen the development, minimising any potential impacts. Overall, the proposed redevelopment of the site for residential use is considered to be in keeping with the nature and character of the area, and the layout and number of units proposed is considered acceptable. Final approval of appearance, scale and landscaping, together with the detailed layout and construction of the access, would be, would be subject to additional approval at reserved matter stage. Uh, proposals are recommended for approval and there is a more petition rejection. Would the petitioner like to come forward to speak on this matter? Yes, I'd like to Some history should be uh, mentioned first. This land, which is Melrose Hall, Melrose House, the unadopted room, and the tennis courts, were left to St. Luke's Church many years ago. In 1955-6, the land for Melrose Hall was given to Melrose Club to build their hall. The land for Melrose House, at a later date, was taken over by the local authority to build one of the first local authority residential homes. The tennis courts were used as a memorial uh, of the war, never recorded, unfortunately, so although there is a plaque there, it cannot be used, we understand, as a memorial of the land. The difficulty was that the piece of land between 
Melrose Hall and Melrose House was a pathway which over the years has become a public right of way because people walk down there. You are saying that the entrance to here is from Charles Road. I have to tell you that if you are travelling from Mel's and you have a sat-nav, the sat-nav will tell you to go down Melrose Avenue along the unadopted road and into the site from there. One of the big difficulties, and if you look at where that pavement is, the lorries come from Melrose Avenue along that unadopted road, and those who attended the meeting on Monday will have seen this. They come whizzing along. You put a pavement there, we're not quite sure what's going to happen. We believe that this road should be part of this development and that the developer should be made to do that road. The road belongs to the church. It may be unadopted. And until this planning application came, we were unaware of the fact that it was their road. The garage, Melrose Hall, residents and people of Hoyley have been putting in the potholes along that road all these years so that people don't damage their cars as they drive along. And we feel that the church should take ownership and that this should be part of this development, that that road which they own, the whole of it, should be done as part of the development. The other issue is that this is in an older part of Hoy Lake. The sewers are not very good, and these residents very close by continually have sewerage problems of backing up. And this will continue if you put 14 more uh, apartments onto that site. If those who attended the meeting on Monday would see the chaos that is caused by parked cars, the, car, the houses on Grover Road, which back onto Charles Road, have no front gardens. They have lawns in the front and they have to walk to their front doors, so they have to park behind. The shops have to park in Charles Road. There is no extra parking. It is silly to say that a, an apartment or a house will only have one car. When you live on our side of the Wirral and people work away, you will find that they have two, three. One house, uh, very close by, has five cars in that house. So 14 car parking spaces on that estate, uh, on that new site, is anything but right. To say that the tennis courts now are not being used, again, is not quite true. They are being used. The reason the tennis club is now not thriving is because this has been on their heads now for a couple of years. They have always maintained to a high standard though, that, those tennis courts, but they can't get new members because they don't know whether they're going to have a tennis club or not. So the whole issue really uh, is not a very good one. The residents too, before you like, feel that it's just... Have one minute. Yes. The 106 is a bit of a bribery to say that you can have development for this if you give £40,000 to the tennis courts on the promenade. Those belong to the local authority and they should have been maintained all these years by the local authority and not need the £40,000. That money should go with the development of this unadopted road if you are going to agree. But having seen the chaos that happens in that road now, uh, I cannot see how you can approve it. The other thing that is incorrect, there is not a public car park nearby. That is a co-op car park for the shoppers of the co-op and the residents who live in the apartments above. <coughs> the uh, residents nearby are anything but happy. They're having a pavement airbrushed outside their house and they will obviously in future be bothered with the people going in and out of this area. Okay, well done, it's a great time. Thank you. Would the applicants or agent like to come forward? Again, you can state your name and your address and <coughs> you have five minutes and there's a little silver button at the bottom there for you to press. Or five to go to. Reverend Ruth Jeffries, Minister for St Luke's Hoy Lake. <coughs> the land on which St Luke's Tennis Club is located is what remains, as been mentioned, 
in the ownership of St. Luke's Methodist Church on a larger area of land with Melrose House and Mel Melrose Hall now occupying substantial portions of it. In common with almost all property owned by the Methodist Church, legal title to the St. Luke's Tennis Club is registered with the trustees for Methodist Church purposes. In accordance with Charity Law, the Methodist Church Act 1976 and its model trusts and standing orders, the ownership and managing trusteeship rests with St. Luke's trustees and the tennis club land is regarded as a very substantial asset. For this reason, St. Luke's is very unlikely to be considered eligible to receive any funding from the Methodist Connection to provide seed funds for expanding its missional activities. These activities currently include provision for children and youth activities, for children and adults with special needs, for adults who experience problems associated with loneliness and mental health issues, and for elderly members of the community. Reflecting the fact that for some years, the number of active members of the St Luke's Tennis Club has been declining, the trustees of St Luke's Methodist Church concluded with sadness that the tennis club has ceased to be a part of the mission of the church. Charity Commission guidelines and the requirements of the Methodist Church have been and will continue to be followed scrupulously by the trustees in seeking to realise the market value of the tennis club site. The tennis club has always been a part of St Luke's Methodist Church activities and has therefore never been in a landlord-tenant relationship. The ongoing dwindling of the number of active members stems in part from the fact that for a number of years no junior members have been permitted to join. This was because of the tennis club committee would otherwise have had to have CRB checks in place to observe safeguarding obligations. There was nothing at the padlocked entrance gate to indicate how other adult members of the local community <coughs> might make inquiries about joining, even if individuals have been minded to do so. It has become aware, apparent that very few active members are now Coy Lake residents. There are three other tennis clubs within walking distance. All of these clubs are ready to welcome the remaining active members of St Luke's Tennis Club, one club even offering to forego joining fees uh, to allow them to operate as a distinctive club within a club. Moreover, St Luke's trustees have indicated the readiness of St Luke's to contribute the £40,000 in accordance with the terms of what was section 106 for upgrading the public tennis courts on the promenade when the sale of the land is completed. This upgrading of tennis courts to which the members of the public have free access will enable a broader cross-section of the community to avail themselves of opportunities to play tennis without having to make any commitment to join a club. An objection voiced by some people to the sale of the land for house building is that the land was originally a croquet club purchased by St Luke's members for the establishment of a tennis club as a war memorial after the Second World War. Um, can I just clarify that we, it was purchased land, it was not gifted. It was purchased land by St Luke's, there was a fundraising for that. The sale of the land will go to make the creation of a living memorial possible using the funds to uh, release to underwrite projects catering for the needs of specific groups of people whilst explicitly honouring the memories of those who sacrificed their lives in the two world wars. Yeah, well, thank you. Very importantly, the plans drawn up by the architect also specifically include the provision for affordable housing. <coughs> Um, I would like to point out in, uh, uh, that the tennis club has already agreed that it will be closing, uh, the matter is of when. So that tennis club has, a, has agreed to close, which means that um, should this planning not go, uh, then that land will just be left. Um, also, in a, a way of maintaining the, the historic nature of the relationship, <laughs> St Luke's has agreed that we would uh, take on some historic memorabilia, including plaques and uh, the, the like, into St Luke's uh, to be uh, displayed there also. That's fine. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.
Is there a board council that would like to speak on this? Would you like to come forward, Gary? Thank you. Firstly, uh, thank you to Madam Chairman for letting me come forward and speak now. Um, I've got a very high regard for St. Luke's Church. It does a wonderful work in Quebec. Um, and my opposition to this scheme now is in no way any reflection of my great admiration for the church. I would like to say that. There are a number of things that have been mentioned today probably not planning issues in any case, so I'll skip over them and just talk about the main planning issues. I think the first one is that the parking facilities are not nowhere near adequate enough. Now, I was so delighted that a number of members of the committee came to the site visit the other day. I think you'd all agree there are pretty chaotic sites down there with uh, massive parking right behind the shops with far too many cars there already. And we have 14 houses, 14 units introduced in this modern age, lots of them more than one car. So we might be looking at 20 to 30 cars extra in the area. I'm suggesting with respect, of course, that if we're looking at the council own guidelines, um, HS4, Access and services being capable of satisfactory reduction, particularly for off street parking uh, and garages and adequate vehicular access. Well, clearly, this plan doesn't meet the council's own guidelines on the provision capable of off street parking facilities. There just won't be that facility. So, I would ask the committee to reject it on that ground alone that the, there is in our parking facilities. The other one that's a great concern, which is a planning issue, is the density and the form of the development, which I think is HS4 section 2, I think. Um, it's a pretty dense proposal, really. If you, if you look at our site, you're going to have this block of flats very, very much poked in and shoved in into a not a very large area. And the guidelines say proposals should not result in a detrimental change in the character of an area. I think that if this is to go ahead, there will be most certainly a detrimental change. And I could go on that ground also and ask the committee to reject this application. There are a couple of other very Quick issues that I may mention. <clears throat> the, the section 103 agreement, the 106 agreement, the 40,000 pound, uh, it's really irrelevant to the, to the case, really, because um, there's, a, there's a clubhouse facility at the moment, and there wouldn't, there's no proposal to build a clubhouse on the front end, I would like to say, the 40,000 pound. And in any case, there's the, the, the te playing tennis on the problem in, in the usual typical gales that we get, it doesn't matter how good the, uh, how good the, the, the facilities are. It's, it's, not a, it's not a compensation at all. And although it's very nice of them to offer this for them, uh, it's not a factor at all. I'm hoping that the committee will take this into account. So, you've seen the site, many of you have seen the site the other day, and thank you for coming. It's a very crowded little site. I gather there's now a new condition that suggested that the road had got to be made up before the, the development take place. That's fine, but that's not going to make any difference whether it's made up before or after. And once it's there, there's going to be chaos with traffic, chaos with parking, and it's going to be a very disappointing end result from the point of view of the people that live around there. So thank you very much for letting me speak. Jerry, could you just turn on my mic, please? Thanks, Jerry. Okay, I, I think we <coughs> need to clarify a couple of points that have been raised in the past year. I know you did mention about um, the pavement, but can you just re clarify uh, that aspect of it? And in terms of the car park, <coughs> could you just clarify that if, whether it's a car park or whether it's a private car park? 
Uh, thank you to Eve Chair. Um, as I mentioned in my, uh, in my presentation, the, the application is, is in outline. Um, so much of the detail of this application will come forward as part of the reserved matters application. And although the, the means of access to the site um, via Charles Road with this new um, turning head um, is, is proposed as part of this application, uh, the actual detail behind the construction of the access and, and, and other details, as I say, will come forward with the reserved matters application. Um, the unadopted road, the private road, runs along here, so along the, um, the western boundary of the site um, and, and, and beyond. Uh, this blue line that you can see on here um, denotes land that's with own, within the ownership of the applicant but not within the, um, the red edge of the application site. So the, um, the, the road is <coughs> down by the, by the applicant. Um, on the plan, um, there is a pavement shown here and across the site. Um, but as I say, it's an outline application. Um, and, and whilst this has uh, resulted in some confusion, I think, um, to, well, a confusion for us all, I think, at the committee site was it on Monday, um, that doesn't necessarily follow that the pavement will, um, will go. Uh, will go in, in situ there because it is an outline application and the details for which um, would follow the reserve matters if, if um, the mission is approved. Um, in terms of the car park on the opposite side of the road, which is here, um, it isn't a public car park, it is a, it is a privately owned car park that's used in connection with the, uh, uh, the shops on, on Market Street, uh, specifically the co-op. Thank you, Matthew. Can I open that up to committee? Any questions? David? Yeah, thank you, Chair. I think it was a very, very valuable site visit for us to see totally in context what was being proposed here. Having, I have to admit, lived in this area since the late 1940s, I know this area particularly well. Um, and there's just a couple of questions I'd like to ask before we um, take it any further. The first one is relating to parking. Uh, however inadequate the parking may appear to be, it would be helpful, I think, if Matthew just relied, related to us what, they can, what we've got down as our parking conditions and something that would be considered in the event of refusal, we would have to rely on what parking is there to substantiate that in event of it going to appeal. And that's the first question I'd like clarify, I think, if I may. And the second one, of course, is that uh, Jerry, the ward counter for the area, did mention the question of density. Now, looking around that area, Melrose Avenue itself contains some pretty high density properties which are terraced. And we've also got another magenta development within about 400 yards, which is probably equally dense. Maybe Matthew could give us some idea of the density of this proposed development, which is an outline one, by the way, this proposed development relating to the, uh, the properties that are also close by. Because I think we need to get a handle on whether this development is appropriate for the area. That's really what we're here for. And I think the points are made by the um, church's representatives, very, very interesting, but they're not planning issues. What we're here to decide, quite simply and quite formally, is whether this particular development, which is unique to this site, is an appropriate solution for this site. Irrespective of how it's been used before, who owned it, who represented it, who sold it, or who is not a planning issue on which we can make any judgments whatsoever, however unfortunate that may be. We are here to discuss purely the planning and the implications of this particular application. I think we ought to remember that before we get diverted down a load of cul-de-sacs. I must admit that on Monday, when we had the site visit, I was very concerned about the question of access, which we just looked at here, the question of access at the end of Charles Road, and the creation of that peculiar bit of pavement, which seemed to be beyond the site boundary of this development, although apparently within the ownership of the club itself one would have thought they might have included that, that boundary as part of the development so we could have a better handle on how they were going to approve that or how they were going to deal with that. I think Matthew and the officers have covered this by the um, condition on the late list, which is really saying to them, look, if we approve this, it's an outline application in principle for this development. Access will be from that particular position, but until you give us an awful lot more information on how you propose to make it work, without disrupting what is already there, then forget about it. And we do have the opportunity, and you ought to be aware of this, I'd like the officer to confirm this, if we were to approve this in principle as an outline application, 
we would still have the opportunity to do things with it at reserve matter stage if we did not like what was being proposed to us. Finally, just to, again, I will say it's an outline, just to cover a few other issues, I don't believe it is overdevelopment of the site. I'd like Matthew to just confirm that the separation distances, which we obviously discussed in great detail on many occasions, whether he believes that in the outline application, the um, separation distances have been attended to. Finally, let me just say, I totally understand where a former councillor, Jackie Ball, is coming to with all this. We are all concerned about Charles Road. It is a very, very busy and congested road, and I don't think any of us would like to preside over a situation where we have dramatically reduced the parking provision that's already available there, or enhanced it, or exacerbated it in such a way that it makes it impossible for people to live in the area. So I'd like to hear what Matthew has to say about those things, and then we'll move on from there. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, if I deal with the issue of the parking provision first, then, um, as, as members will be aware, we have a supplementary planning document, um, number four, which sets out um, maximum standards, um, and they are uh, one parking space um, per, per unit. Um, in this instance, each of the four houses has got one parking space, um, and each of the um, apartments also has one parking space. So it meets the maximum standards set out, uh, the maximum uh, number set out in our standards. Um, but on top of that, the site is um, it is within uh, um, very close proximity of the, the key town centre. In fact, the boundary of the key town centre runs along uh, the outside edge. Of, of Charles Road, so everything on that side on this plan here is within the Key Town Centre, everything on this side is, is outside it. Um, so it, it is within um, uh, ready access of, of the amenities. Um, the other thing to note is that there, is, there are a number of um, very accessible um, uh, bus routes and uh, bus stops on, on Market Street as well. Um, so the site is accessible by, by bus. Um, cycle parking provision is, is also um, outlined within the scheme and uh, the railway station is within 400 metres of the site as well. Um, so the site is, is what we would consider um, a highly accessible and sustainable location. So in terms of our, our parking provision, um, it, it does meet the standards that are set out and also provides for non-alignments on, on cars as well. Um, in terms of, of density, um, density requirements um, were removed um, from, from the planning system some years ago uh, when the PPS3, that was the old um, uh, planning policy statement on housing, um, uh, was removed. Um, but just to give a general indication for members, um, the, the site would equate at roughly 40 dwellings per hectare, um, which is below what would have been set out in PPS and three. So it is quite a low density um, development. Um, and as you, you've already pointed out, um, the, the layout of development within, within Hoylake is, is at a much higher density than, than is proposed for this site. And finally, um, separation distances. As I said, this application is in, is in outline, um, but having regard to, the, uh, to the, the, the details that are shown on these plans, um, if the application was detailed as shown on that plan on the screen, um, then the minimum separation distances would all be achieved. Just one final quick one. Um, Clearly there's the suggestion that this might create a lot of additional parking in the associated area, although, as you rightly say, we have complied with the maximum number of parking places that are scheduled for development of this sort. I just would ask if the um, highways officers could just comment on whether they believe that this development will have any impact on the rest of Charlie Road, which of course is one of the major concerns as raised by our former councillor, Jackie Hall. And I can understand where they're coming from. Charles Road is an important, impossible road to try and park on if you want to try and do any business in that area. And I've tried it on many occasions. But what we're keen to see is that we don't believe that this would exacerbate the situation any worse. Because what we have to remember with all the points that we've raised, or I've raised, and other people have raised, whatever we do with this, if we refuse it, and we refuse it for the wrong 
planning reasons. It will all be overturned at appeal within six weeks and it will be a period victory. In other words, local people will think, oh, wonderful, we've won. And then suddenly, six weeks later, they'll find that all the reasons that were put forward for turning it down are not valid from a planning perspective. And that would be the worst of all possible worlds. I'm happy to look for reasons for turning it down which are planning relevant, but I'm not prepared to provide over a situation where we're trying to defend the indefensible at appeal, because that would not be <coughs> interest. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, through you, Chair. Um, as Matthew said, the um, parking that's provided in this um, proposal meets the Council's standards in terms of the maximum required of SPD4. So the, the you know, it's it's, um, it's possible that some of the people who move in there may not have vehicles, um, and obviously some of the people who move in will have vehicles, and there may be times when more than one vehicle comes and is associated with, with an individual property in there that might require some additional parking on the streets in Charles Road or anywhere else that they can fit in. Um, but the, you know, the fact of the matter is, uh, Councillor, that parking on the streets is a privilege. And it's not, it's not actually a right for people to be able to park on the street either close to the house or close to their place of business. Um, so, as I say, it does mean the council's standards in that regard. Um, and I don't feel that there will be grounds to object to the proposal um, in terms of any potential overspill parking that might, might occur on, on the odd on the on the occasion. Any comments from anybody else? Thank you, Chair. I just wanted to raise the issue of um, what's referred to as draft policy CS31 in the report, which seeks to protect the use for sport. You know. um, I just want to be clear how we feel that that's overridden by the application because it does state in the report that the club is in continued use on the site visit, both courts were being used. And I thought the point was quite relevant about um, you know, this £40,000 for the courts on the promenade. And I think you know, that that site is a very sheltered site and it strike me that it's very suitable for tents compared to the, the site on the promenade. That point was made by the, the Board of Council. So could I just seek some clarification as to how, how we're dealing with the draft policy CS31, or is that could that in some way be grounds for um, possibly refusing this? Thank you for you, Chair. Uh, just to pick up on, on, on the policy point first, it's a draft policy that's contained in the core strategy, and at this point in time, um, as members of the committee will be aware, um, weight to be given to policies contained in the, in the draft and core strategy um, it is, is very uh, little at this point in time. Um, we assess the application because the tennis courts at the moment, there's two of them, are in private use only. Um, they're not available to members of the public. So I, as a member of the public, could not go to the tennis club and, and play tennis there um, unless I became a member of, of the tennis club. Um, and the tennis club could um, quite uh, quite lovely, um, um restrict me from having access to that site or, or from giving me membership to the, to the club. Um, the £40,000 that uh, will be used to upgrade um, the, the facilities on, on Mel's Parade are publicly accessible. They are available to all members of the public. Um, and we feel that by upgrading those facilities um, that don't have restricted membership um, and are uh, available to all members of the public, um, would be a, a better uh, use of, of community facilities than, than, um, than currently is, is in place here. Um, and as we've heard from the, uh, the church, uh, whether it's true or not, we, the, the, you know, the, the, um, the, the tennis club is closing and those, those tennis courts will not be available for use whether you're a member of the club or not. So we do think that the, um, the use of the money to upgrade publicly available um, tennis courts is, is, uh, is a good solution. Um. 
back to a very briefly, the petition mentioned um, that they'd like us as a committee to get the church to do something about the state of the undocked road. I just want to clarify that we as a committee are not able to do that. Uh, thank you, three of you, very good. Yes, that's right. This, the, 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 um, the, public, uh, the private unadopted road does not form part of the application site uh, and the council has no control over, over, uh, over that road. Okay, I think we can The Office of Recommendation is to approve this application subject to the conditions listed and also the additional condition 8 on the late list. Do you have a move for that? We don't have a move for it. Do we have a move? Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Okay. Um, if we go to the uh, the vote, then all those in favour of approval. Those against. Okay. That is carried. Is approved. Anybody that was here for that application, if you would, if you do want to leave now, please feel free to do so. But you'd be quite welcome to uh, stay as well if you find it. Okay, we're going to move to agenda item five on page nineteen. Uh, Marcy, could you have a presentation, please? Uh, thank you, through you, Chair. Uh, this application was subject to a member's site visit back in January. Um, the proposal seek planning permission for the demolition of the existing detached dwelling and the redevelopment of the site with two smaller detached dwellings. The application is, is made in outline with all matters reserved for subsequent approval. However, illustrative plans have been submitted that demonstrate how the site could be redeveloped, having regards to siting, scale and the relationship with neighbouring properties. The plot measures some 34 metres in width, um, so that's across the front of the site, um, along Stanley Road, and between 50 and 57 metres deep. So it's 50 metres here, 57 metres deep here. Uh, from the inside edge of Stanley Road to the rear boundary of the site adjacent to the beach. Uh, the existing two-storey dwelling measures 16 metres wide and is 9.5 metres deep, with an eaves height of 4.6 metres and a ridge height of just under uh, 8 metres. In comparison, the ridge height at 64 Stanley Road is some 10 metres high, and at 66 Stanley Road, some 9 metres high. The distance, uh, I'm just going to get the plan. So this is the application site, this is number 64, and this is number 66. So the distance between 66 and 64A Stanley Road, that's this gap here, is currently 15.5 metres. And between 64 and 64A, so that's this gap here, um, it's just shy of 18 metres, although a double garage, as you can see on the plan, is located between these two properties sited just over six metres from the gable end of the existing dwelling at 64A. As previously outlined, this application is submitted in outline with all matters including layout, appearance, scale, landscaping and access, reserved for further approval. However, illustrative plans for two detached dwellings have been um, submitted that demonstrate how the site can be developed with two dwellings. Um, so in terms of the street scene, that's the, um, the Layer on the bottom of the plan of the <coughs> Whilst any approval does not approve the illustrative layout shown, it does demonstrate that the site could be redeveloped with two dwellings without impacting on neighbouring amenity or the overall street scene. 
Stanley Road is made up with a mix of house types and designs adjacent to the site at 62 and adjacent to the site at 62 and 64 Stanley Road are a pair of semi detached dwellings. Um, so these, this one here is number 64. Um, it's, it's one pair of a, of a pair of semis, the attached one next to it is number 62. Um, there's flatted development at Hillbury Point and Invergarry Road, just a little further east along Stanley Road. Um, at number 66 Stanley Road, immediately west of the application site, is a two-storey detached dwelling that has a frontage that occupies almost the entire width of the site. Um, so just to go back to the, to the plan, you can see that it, it occupies virtually the whole width of, um, of the frontage of Stanley Road. Similar detached dwellings with long linear frontages uh, facing onto Stanley Road can be found at other points mm -hmm. along Stanley Road. It is clear that there is no one overriding house type or design of dwelling that characterises this part of Hoylake. Each property is different in scale and appearance, and examples of older established properties, together with newer, less traditional house types, can be found along the length of Stanley Road. In fact, um, the, the application site itself, 64, is, is quite a modern dwelling. As such, the redevelopment of this site with two detached dwellings will not have an adverse impact on the character of the area, the street scene as a whole, or the setting of the conservation area. And just for now, this information, the value of the conservation area runs along this line here. So everything north of um, everything north of Stanley Road along that point is outside of the conservation area. Everything outside of the conservation area. The illustrative plans demonstrate that the site can be redeveloped having regard to policy HS4 for new residential development and policy CH2 uh, developments affecting the setting of the conservation area. Whilst protecting amenities of existing residents and meeting the council's requirements in relation to interface distances. Um, the proposals are recommended for approval and there is a offline petition. Uh, would the petitioner like to address the committee in support of this petition? Um, okay. Is there a board council would like to speak on this? Like to yes, please. Thank you. You're busy last night, Jerry. Oh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Ken. Firstly, I would like to apologise on behalf of the petitioner. Uh, the late petitioner had children who got small smallpox or chickenpox or something. <laughs> 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 Some sort of terrible pox in the And her neighbours uh, who were coming in her stead, uh, one of them was travelling up from London somewhere, and they always had their own. I was very disappointed when you looked back and nobody appeared, so you obviously not around here. So, just a word, just all I can say on this very quick. I actually, having been a councillor in this area for 17 years, I'm just staggered, staggered to see that the officers could support this sort of development in such a lovely area. It's right next to the um, conservation area, as, as Matthew just showed you, right, Bunting Rice Conservation. Right opposite the wonderful, wonderful golf club, but we did have that one for that last year. And uh, here we have this. I, I really don't need to say anything. Really. I really need to say, show that picture. Don't do it, but I'm just saying, you could show that picture again. Uh, what a lovely sight it was that you just showed us, Matthew. The, a lovely rain, a lovely row of houses, nice single house, and then nothing down, and then built two very boring looking. Similar as in this area. What, is, what a pity it is spoiling that area. Let me just again, and very simple, very short, but let me just simply say our own guidelines, HS4, the proposal being of a scale which relates well to the surrounding properties, in particular with regard to existing densities and form of development. I mean, that's our guidelines. Spoiling has got to be fit well in the density and the form of development, but it certainly doesn't. I hope you have another look at that picture before you vote tonight, because that shows you what horrendous size it is. 
And then section, subsection 2 says, the proposal should not result in a detrimental change to the character of the area. Oh, look at it, it's coming up. Uh, no, that's a different one. The proposal should not result in a de detrimental change in the character of the area. I think this is a blot on the beautiful landscape of Stanley Road, and I hope you will reject it. Thank you. Oh, well, the, well, the reason being that two, de two deaths and not in keeping with the area and not conforming to our own guidelines, which I, you know too well, HS4. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. I'm going to ask Matthew to just clarify some of the points that you've made there. So, the <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for you, Chair. Um, as I said in my, in my presentation, this is a full outline uh, proposal. So, although those plans on there show two detached dwellings, that's not the final design. That's just um, supposed to be an indication of how two, um, two houses um, on that site could be accommodated. Um, and just so that members who weren't able to attend the site visit in January are aware, I hope the applicant's not here because I don't mean any offence by this, <laughs> but that is the existing property which is not in itself the most attractive house on Stanley Road. Um, just also for members' information, along Stanley Road, um, there have been new developments approved and built at 26A, 50A, 62, 68A, 48A. So there are examples of this type of development along the Stanley Road, along with, um, as I said in the presentation, flatted development. We'll just go back to the, uh, to the site plan. These, these here are flatted developments and beyond, and there are flats further down the standard road as well. So there is a mix, but just to be clear, those plans that are shown, they are indicative, they're not the final design. Thank you, Matthew. Hopefully that clarifies things for the committee. Thank you. 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 Sorry, just one quick question. Jerry mentioned that um, he, he personally is, I think it's quite a subjective order. He, he considered this to be an overdevelopment of the area. Is there anything in terms of planning policy that would suggest it is? Thank you, through you, Chair. Um, just to go back to this site here, four flats, that would be a higher density than this. Um, there are 12 flats, I think, on this site here, that would be a higher density. There are examples, again, of flatted development along Stanley Road, which would result in a higher density than this. I think the um, again, Chair, thank you, Chair. I think the simple fact is that Stanley Road contains a, a wide selection of different types of properties. Again, I have to admit, I used to be more of them, but that's another story. Um, but they've been there for 200 odd years. There've been houses built in the last five years, and there's a total, completely cross the section range of buildings and buildings on there. And I'm not particularly happy with the design of those houses, appearance-wise, from the front. And as Matthew has said, this is an outline application. All that the applicant is seeking to do is show that it is possible to construct two houses on that site that would comply with our planning legislation and our planning advice. And I think they've probably done that. I, along with Jerry, hope they don't end up looking just like that, because I think it could look a lot better than that. But the principle is established that it is possible to construct two houses in that location without that being at odds to any large extent, any extent at all in fact, to the rest of the properties on Stanley Road. And because of that, and because of that alone, I do not believe we could mount any sustainable reason for, for refusing this particular outline planning <laughs> application. Thanks, Chair. Uh, I was just going to say, approval, Has anybody else got anything to add? Uh, the officer's recommendation is to approve subject to the conditions listed. Do we have a mover? No, Thank you, Jeff. Do you have a second Thank you, Irene. All those in favour of approval? That's unanimous. That's carried. We're now going to go to agenda item 10, which is 
on pages 49 to 54. We'd like to have a presentation. I'm going to talk uh, to this panel rather than the um, panel that members have got on their agenda, if that's okay. Um, this application, again, was subject to a member's site visit on Monday. Uh, planning Commission is sought for the erection of seven new dwellings on land on the corner of Hazeldean Way and Beaumaris Drive. The proposals include three um, three bed properties and four two bed in a small terrace of three dwellings and two pairs of semi-detached dwellings. Uh, so there's a pair of semi-detached here, a pair of semi-detached here, and uh, a small terrace of three uh, here. Uh, one pair of semi will front Hazeldean Way, uh, so that's this, this pair here, uh, whilst the remaining five units will front Beaumaris Drive. Um, in terms of the street scene there, this is what you would see from Bonaris Drive, that's the bottom one, section BB, and uh, section AA is the um, view uh, if you were standing up at the site from Hazelwood Way. The site is located within the primarily residential area and surrounding land use is housing. Therefore, <laughs> residential development on this site uh, should be acceptable in principle subject to the criteria set out in policy HS4 of the Unitary Development Plan relating to new residential development. The scale of development relates to existing properties in terms of pattern of development and layout uh, with interface distances all achieved. Given that the area is residential in character, the proposed development would not result in a detrimental, character, uh, detrimental change in the character of the area. Each dwelling will have off-street parking provision with three out of the seven proposed dwellings having two spaces provided, the other four will have one space. There are a number of trees present on the site. Uh, these trees are not subject to any statutory protection by way of a tree preservation order or conservation area and therefore can be removed without requiring consent. These trees, however, have been looked at by the council's tree officer, and whilst they do offer some immunity value in the street scene, their overall immunity value is limited, having regard to their health and age and the species that are on site. Given their small immunity value and the opportunity provided by the new development for replacement planting, a preservation order is not viable, and a refusal of planning permission on this basis could not be sustained. The footpath that runs diagonally across the site would require stopping up if development is allowed. However, the loss of this footpath is not considered to be unacceptable as a wider footpath runs around the full perimeter of the site and so the pedestrian safety would not be affected if development is allowed. There are currently 15 garages on site. Of those 15, 11 are currently let with the remaining four empty. Of the 11 let units, six are let to properties within close proximity of the site, with the remaining five let to properties further afield. All the garages are privately owned and let by Magenta, who also own other garage units uh, within the borough, including two in Torrington Gardens, which is, uh, which is not far from the application site. The, ha the applicants have indicated that licensees displaced by the demolition of these garages as part of the proposals outlined would be given priority for alternative arrangements where they live locally, use their current garage to park a vehicle, and or are disabled. In conclusion, the development of the site for seven units is considered to be acceptable. The character of the area would not be harmed and conditions proposed would secure satisfactory materials to be used in the construction of the site, the landscaping of the site, and also provision for any foraging bats by way of bat boxes and bat bricks. This development accords with criteria set out in policy HS4 for new residential development and the principles of the National Planning Policy Framework and is recommended for approval. And there are two more
Thank you. Um, would the petitioners like to come forward? We're we going to have one speaking on this or two? Just me, Chair. Right, so the, the, no, uh, they're not going to speak, they're going to speak on no. the call. Okay, would you like to come forward, please? Thanks, Chair. Chair, with your permission, I've got some photographs here which I'd like to hand out to the committee. That's fine. While you're handing them out, um, what this means actually is because they, um, they're not going to speak up against the petition, then the applicant can't speak on this. We're going to have to stay from the Royal Council. Mike, if you could just uh, say the name for the minutes and um, then we have Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Mike Sullivan, representing uh, Pensman Thing World, Labour Councillor for Pensman Thing World. Uh, thank you, Chair. And may I thank the committee and the members of staff who kindly came along on Monday to the site visit. This proposal for seven new homes, two lots of semis and three tents. That outline photograph you can see up there, the people who came on the site visit, the members who came on the site visit, will realise how small this is. That, that representation up there looks big. And it, it, it's in no way, this, this is a very small green space with 16 garages at the back. And then there's a small access road to the garages, which will all go. They, they will all go. Now, that we're talking here about an area which is highly populated. There's only one road in and one road out. Now, this, this road that runs through is very, very narrow. At one point, it's only four metres wide. And I think, as is illustrated in the photographs that I've handed out, this is just, this was taken from somebody's uh, front room in Bormanus Drive. And you can see how congested, this is just an normal deck, just an, an ordinary deck. Actually, it's a day when people are at work as well. So you can see, it's, it's a, as I said before, it's a very highly populated area. And if we're going to lose 16 garages, now it's up to Torrington, the, the flats, and I'd, I'd like to know how many garages are empty up there, because there's major parking problems up by Torrington Gardens. So to glibly say that we will relocate the, the occupants of the 16 garages. At best, it's glib. And I think we all know, the members are, the people don't want to walk to garages which are even further away than where they live. And the other point I'd like to make about appertaining to the photograph, does any member actually think that any of the emergency services could get through there? The police, ambulance, fire, and then we've got Biffa, the refuge lorries coming up there, 
once a week, every week. We've been told that the proposed new houses will have room for two cars. And I think it's the three terrace, which have only got room for one car. Now, this site is tiny. I actually dispute that you'll be able to get two, two car spaces in the, in, the, uh, in the semis. And don't let's forget, we're gonna lose 16 garages. So I would suggest that we're gonna get 16 more cars onto this highly contested road the way it is. This is, a, this is an ill thought out planning application, Chair. There's no doubt in my mind about that. To exacerbate the problems on the site, there's a primary school very close. Parents actually park in there to take the children to school. It's thing more primary. And parents park in there regularly to walk their children to school to stop um, to stop the congestion in and around the school because some of busy, busy main roads sometimes we go. Um, and that that's adding even more congestion. They talked there about taking the footpath out. Magenta for it. The player Matthew talked about taking the footpath out, which crosses over the, the green space. And he, we were told that there's a pavement running right round. Now, as again, as you can see from those photographs, people can't use the pavement. I run round there regularly, and I'm yet to use the pavements because cars are continually parked all round there. And there's members here who know how bad the parking is on pavements. And if cars were to park on the road on the, on, in Hazeldean or, or Mavs, they would block the road here. Yeah. They would block the road. So again, to glibly say that there's a footpath running round that green space, which people can use, is not 100% correct. It's far from it. There's three houses there, right facing this, this proposed new development. We are experiencing flooding now. It's a common occurrence there. Numbers 33, 35, and 37. Now, if this green space, and it is a green space, with lovely trees, and it's an amenity, let's not forget, it's also an amenity for the children to use there. The children who live in the area, and also the grandchildren who come into the area. They use that green space to play on. Um, so there's flooding there. And if, if, the, if this proposal goes through, um, that will exacerbate the water seeping through the green space that we've got there. It will all be concrete. And that will exacerbate the, um, the flooding problem. Another major problem in the area is water pressure. And, and have the planners and the builders thought about the already existing problem with, with lack of water pressure? There's a street light, and I'm, I've, the, the photographs that I've passed around there, they wouldn't, um, they, they didn't come out well when copied. There's one street light on the corner there by this development, and according to the plans, that street light is being taken away. That's the only street light around there which is affording the light. And if that light is taken away, it really will diminish the area. It will add, there's no antisocial behaviour there at all, but the residents really do fear that it could bring antisocial behaviour. Um, and it will diminish, there's no doubt about it. If, this, if these plans go ahead, and I sincerely hope they don't, the quality of life for these residents will be seriously diminished. The residents, we also think that the seven proposed dwellings are not in keeping with the area. Certainly the three terraced houses aren't. There's no terraced houses around this area. They're all semis. And that again is one of the photographs that I've circulated showing the committee. 
what sort of dwellings they are around there. It, it really is a very, a very congested area the way it is. It, it really is. <coughs> the amount of disruption the building work will bring if, if this proposal goes through. I can't see how the how the lorries are going to get through. But have we? I'd like the committee to consider the disruption. And there's a lot of elderly people that are around there. <coughs> We've got the dust from the building site, from the bricks, from from the dust from the lorries. Um, and anyone who's experienced a new build where they live, um, it, it it will cause major disruption, and and, um, and it will be a detriment to the quality of life of the residents. The residents are also concerned, looking at the plans, about whether um, boundary lines have been eroded or done away with completely. Because where the garages are, the garage is actually back on to a property on Bulmaris Drive. And there's concern that um, if this proposal goes ahead, if this panic application is approved, that the, the boundary lines so Matthew, if we can if we can look at the boundary lines please. The residents are also concerned about knocking down the garages there's asbestos in the garages. So that's that's a concern for the residents. And in summation, Chair, I really am. I'm a, I, I support Magenta. I support building new houses. This country and this area, the whole of the body, needs new houses. But in my opinion, this is an ill-thought-out scheme. We're only talking about seven, seven properties. I live in this area. I know of, a, of at least two other areas where they could build more houses in, in, the, in the near vicinity. Um, so I do think, I hope that this application will be denied tonight. Um, and I think it is ill thought out and ill prepared. The roads really are very narrow. And that's me finished, Chair. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Just turn on the mic. Thank you. Um, there's a, a number of points that were raised in um, your discussion there, Mike, that aren't related to planning issues. Yeah. In particular, well, sort of parking on pavement is it's a police enforcement. It's not something that the planning committee can do anything about. Okay. There are a couple of things that I would like to get the officers to clarify. Okay. Um, one of them was regarding the, the number of garages uh, and those that are in use, if you could clarify that, please, Matthew. And also um, the discussion about um, the boundary lines, um, if there, there is an issue with that. And then I'd also like to have clarification about the asbestos part of uh, this development, please. clarification from, from Councillor Smith and what he means by boundary lines because I'm not clear what he means by boundary lines. We had a residence meeting last night, Chair, and some of the residents said, where are where the, the garages back on to the existing property on the first <coughs> drive? There's a feeling from the residents that the boundary lines are at best being eroded or at worst, being ignored. Okay. I've just um, heard from some listeners that that wouldn't be a planning matter at all. <coughs> so if we could just cover the points regarding the number of garages currently in use and also what the asbestos and all over the world can be. Thank you, through, through you, Chair. Uh, we have had information from uh, from the applicants about the number of garages that are currently left on the site. Um, as I said in my presentation, there are 11 currently left, um, and of those 11, six of them live within proximity of the site. Um, and I, uh, Councillor Sullivan made uh, reference to Torrington Gardens and Torrington Drive um, for. Um, and in fact, a number of the <coughs> residents who left um, garages are on the site at the moment do live in Torrington Drive um, and not in Beaumaris Drive or Hayden Drive. In fact, there's only one 
Otherwise, we do this in Hazelden Way, um, and, and the other uh, lives in Barnston Road, the uh, two that live closest to the site. And so, of the, of the um, 11 that are currently let, um, six are, um, are let to people that live um, within the surrounding area. Bigger than usual grass veg, 
and but given its size and given the representations that we've we've received, yeah. clearly there probably is some immediacy value for uh, local residents um, uh, on the land. And finally, um, members will probably start saying I'm obsessed, but the, the issue of the street lights. Um, it's probably out anyway, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. Um, the removal uh, of a, a lone street light uh, in an area might be, could very well uh, be a, uh, an issue that would concern us, particularly if it created a dark uh, patch uh, where there wasn't previously one, and surely that would uh, co contribute to some of our community safety uh, style uh, policies. So, Notwithstanding the concerns of other members have raised on, um, on the issue of, of traffic, uh, and, you know, to a large degree we had that discussion on the first item, it strikes me there are four other potential uh, issues which I'm not entirely satisfied that have been addressed uh, in the report uh, or yet addressed uh, as part of the discussion we're having now. Thank you. 
future, again, I'm going to talk to the more detailed plan for uh, members of the office, uh, the location plan on the agenda papers. Uh, once again, this application is subject to a member's site visit on Monday. The Commission has sought the erection of four dwellings on land to the north of St. Peter's Primary School. The site is located within the primarily residential area defined by the Unitary Development Plan and within Heswell Lower Village, uh, Heswell Lower Village Conservation Area. The location of the site within the conservation area does not preclude new development, rather that such development should, res should respect its surroundings in terms of layout, design and use of materials. New development should also positively contribute to the overall character of the area. The proposals have been designed to have regard to the character of the conservation area, including the older village core and specifically plot, plot sizes within the locality. Separation distances are comfortably achieved both in relation to the layout of the new houses within the site and their relationship with neighbouring properties outside of the site. A significant number of objections relate to the impact the proposal may have on highway safety and access issues. For a development of this scale, an adoptable standard access road with a minimum footpath width of 1.8 metres would be required. In the case of these proposals, a two metres wide footway is proposed, which represents an opportunity to improve the current 